If you're looking for the strongest PvP hunter build in the Crucible right now, then stay tuned, because today I'm going to reveal the new dominant hunter PvP meta that you won't want to miss out on. Don't get confused fiddling around with different subclasses, aspects, or fragments. Today, I'm going to take you by the hand and give you a plug and play build that you can start using immediately to dominate your foes in the Crucible, all in nine minutes or less. Let's get started. If you've been paying attention to the recent PvP changes, you may have noticed that there is a lot more primary gunfire in the Crucible. The days of crutching special weapons like shotguns, fusions, or snipers is officially over, and PvP now is a lot more about using your primary weapons and in particular, hand-holding and team shooting with your teammates. As someone who has over 4,000 hours in PvP, I can tell you that when it comes to primary gunfights, a lot of the time, the person who wins is the person who lands the first shot. Now, there's three ways you can land the first shot on your opponent. You can be faster, you can be smarter, or you can cheat. And while I like to think that there's a lot of smart and fast people in the room, it's a hell of a lot easier to just cheat. Wait, did he say cheat? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this build is practically cheating because you will literally be invisible for every single engagement you take, and when paired with a certain exotic, which we're going to cover shortly, every time you win your primary fight, you're going to trigger an explosion to take out the rest of your enemy's hand-holding friends while proccing your own personal war hacks. Not only that, we're going to take things up another level by using a mod with a hidden bonus that still hasn't been patched by Bungie. If you equip Radar Booster on your weapons, all you have to do is swap weapons once and you will have full, normal radar while invisible. No more radar nerf, your Night Stalker will be operating just like it used to back in the day. And hey, if it's in the game, why not use it, right? Now the exotic, which is the centerpiece of this entire build, is something that you may not have really seen used much in PvP, and that exotic is Gia Falcon's Horberg. You may have seen this a lot in PvE, but what people don't realize is just how overpowered this is in the current meta. See, the main reason why this exotic in particular is rising in value in the current meta market is because when you exit invisibility, your weapons have volatile rounds for the next three seconds. Now you may be thinking, well that's cool, but what's the practical benefit? Because of all the recent PvP changes, you're going to notice that people are holding hands and clumping up more now than ever before. Any ability or perk that punishes people grouping up close together is is going to rise in value. Now, once upon a time, the answer was obvious. Just put on Cloud Strike and go to town. But now, with special ammo changes, we have to look for more creative ways to punish hand-holding, death-balling teams. So it's simple. Put on Gear Falcons, go invisible, and once you start shooting, any kill you get will trigger a huge volatile explosion. But wait, that's not all. Equip the right aspects, and not only will you get a fat, juicy, volatile explosion, that kill will also reproc your invisibility and give you wall hack for the next few seconds. Then you can just reload, reacquire another target with your war hacks up, and blast them again. Rinse and repeat, constantly dipping in and out of invis just to destroy your opponents from the shadows. Oh, but wait, there's even more. The silly thing about Gear Falcons is that the perk procs every time you go invisible, right? But it doesn't say that it procs every time you make yourself invisible. So, what if your teammates could make you invisible infinitely, over and over again, before every single engagement? I mean, that would kind of completely break the gameplay loop because you wouldn't even have a cooldown. You could just go invisible before every single fight, and if you get the kill, you go invisible again and push the momentum with war hacks. but if you don't, then you go back to your teammate to just go invis again. There's no way that this is possible, right? Well, if you think this build is broken, all you have to do is pair it up with one invis hunter running Omnioculus, and you can literally go invisible infinitely by going back to your friend with the Omni. With the right team composition, you can have an entire team of invis hunters who are all always invisible except when they're blasting you with volatile rounds and activating war hacks. Yeah, you can see why I'm so excited. Just quickly though, settle a very important debate for me. My friend found a box in his girlfriend's closet with photos of all of her exes. Is this weird or completely normal? Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll pick one person to carry to the lighthouse this week and enter them in the drawer to win this beautiful emblem. Don't forget also to drop a like and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more builds from me. As a small creator, it means the world to me, so thank you. So in terms of aspects, the Night Stalker can choose from three total aspects, Vanishing Step, Trapper's Ambush, and Stylish Executioner. For this build, I strongly recommend Vanishing Step and Stylish Executioner. Vanishing Step makes you invisible after 
dodging. This is essential as going invisible is what procs the perks of Gear Falcons. Also note that when you dodge, you will also have a unique dodge animation, irrespective of whether you use Marksman's or Gambler's dodge. Now, Stylish Executioner is what provides the insane benefits from the volatile rounds that Gear Falcons gives you after exiting invisibility. Defeating a weakened, suppressed, or volatile target grants invisibility and true sight, aka wall hacks. What this means is that when you're invisible, your void weapon rounds will proc the volatile debuff on any opponents, and defeating that opponent will trigger Stylish Executioner, which makes you invisible again and gives you wall hacks. But not only that, killing anyone affected by your smoke bomb or tether will also proc Stylish Executioner, as well as killing any opponent who is debuffed by one of your teammates, like if one of your teammates would hit someone with a suppression grenade, for example. In terms of fragments, here's what I recommend. Echo of Persistence to give you increased invis uptime. This is useful as the longer you can go invis, the more time you have to stalk your kill from a distance. Echo of Leeching is also essential. Not only does it give you a free plus 10 resilience stat boost, it also begins health regeneration after a melee kill. This is extremely useful if you get into a close quarters fight and will frequently save your life, especially in multiple opponent engagements. Echo of Dilation offers a double stat boost of plus 10 to mobility and to intellect. That alone almost makes it worth it, but on top of that, Dilation also grants enhanced radar while crouching and a faster crouch walk. Lastly, I would choose Echo of Vigilance for free overshields when you secure a kill while low health, kind of like a Walmart version of one I Mask for Titan. Okay, and now for the really important ingredient to this build, but first, just quickly before we cover off the rest of the builds, are you struggling with PvP or going flawless in general? Join my Patreon and get amazing benefits like weekly trials cards with me, as well as Crucible coaching sessions. You'll also get access to a private VIP community full of chill, cracked PvP players to also help you go flawless and achieve your PvP goals. All right, now what's really important to remember is that Gear Falcons only grants volatile rounds to void weapons. If you're using a non-void weapon when you exit invis, then volatile will not proc. So what this means is that you need to find yourself a void weapon that you feel really comfortable with. Lucky for us, there are plenty of super dominant options. Now, in my opinion, the weapon I'm currently using is the absolute dream. Check this out. This Ross Araga rifle has repulsive brace, which gives me a void overshield after killing void debuff targets like anyone affected by volatile. And it has onslaught, which lets me start deleting people with an increased fire rate immediately after the kill without even having to reload. I've had an outrageous amount of fun with this gun. And if you're interested, you can farm it in lost sectors or just by getting lucky with world drops. Otherwise, I definitely recommend Positive Outlook, which is an amazing 450 RPM auto rifle, which you can farm from Vanguard Strikes and focus with Zavala in the tower. If you prefer hand cannons, then Targeted Redaction is a void 120 RPM hand cannon that is also craftable. Shayura's Wrath, which you can focus the same 14, is also a great void SMG if you prefer playing more up close and personal. All right, now in terms of abilities to equip, opt for Marksman's Dodge instead of Gambler's Dodge as it has a lower cooldown and lets you go invisible more often. In terms of melees, Night Stalkers only have one choice, the Snare Bomb, also commonly known as the Smoke Bomb. Now, this might be a bit of a hot take, but I think that the Smoke Bomb is the single most effective melee ability in the game by a country mile. I mean, check this out. The Smoke Bomb weakens targets by increasing the damage they take by 10%, it slows them, it blinds them, and it actually damages them too. On top of that, it can manipulate radar, make you and allies invisible, and can be activated as a movement ability whilst in midair. In terms of grenades, I strongly recommend using Vortex Nades or Scatter Nades. Vortex is better for zone control, Scatter Nades are more effective for pure lethality. In terms of mods, I recommend using Targeting, Dexterity, Fastball, Unflinching Holster, and Bomber Times 3. Stats-wise, you'll want to prioritize mobility, recovery, and discipline in that order, though ideally you would have 100 in each. To make things easier for you, you can also check out the dim link below for the Gear Falcons build, which I'm currently using with Night Stalker. All right, if you enjoyed the video and if you decide to dip your toes in supremacy for Guardian Games this week, don't forget to check out the best builds for Guardian Games, which you can watch over here. Much love, and I'll see you all in the Crucible.